Hello, everybody. Looks looks very much like I'm live. Welcome to the last live stream for June, I think. Well, no, it's not actually because I think the 31st is next Tuesday. So it's the second last live stream for June 2020. And today I'm painting Bosque Bell roses again. And um, you can see the subject over here. This is a David Austin rose, Bosque Bell, B-O-S-C-O-B-E-L. I'm growing them out the front. And unfortunately, these are not the ones I plan to paint today. Because the strangest thing happened, I went out there this morning. I've got quite a few roses in pots out the front of the house now. We live in the middle of nowhere in the countryside, right? We're even in the middle of nowhere in the middle of nowhere. We're not even in a village. And uh, I went outside this morning and either in the night or really early in the morning, because I was up at six today, someone came and took all the best heads of all my roses. And they actually went around the garden, which is quite a big garden, and they also took the wild roses that grow over in the far corner, which I was planning to paint next. Hello, Mariana, nice to see you. You're up early today. Yeah, so it's kind of ironic in a way, I suppose, because I remember it was last year or the year before I borrowed some roses from, it wasn't actually in someone's garden, they were by the side of the road and they were in their driveway and I had a big rose bush with these very small roses and I took just a couple of small ones. Left, obviously, 99% of them there. And someone's actually been and taken almost all my roses. So I'm going to have to wait for them to grow back. Um, but some, some of the buds are opening. They even took some unopened buds, which is really weird. But thankfully, this one, which is open at the moment, uh, was uh, was hidden in the bay plant next to it, so I've got this one to paint. Let me go. Um, I'll go over onto the canvas. I've already made a bit of a start today. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I suppose it is horrible, but I, to be honest, I'm more puzzled than anything else. I don't think it was vindictive. I mean, it, you know, our first thought with something like this is it's is it's um, it might be racism, you know. We do live in the middle of the countryside, and this area that we live in is very white. I mean, obviously I'm white, <laughs> but my wife and, my, and therefore my boys aren't, you know. And um, but I don't think it was that, because then I think they would, if they just wanted to send some kind of a message, some kind of all lives matter thing, then um, they would have destroyed the roses, right? They just took all the roses, so I think they just wanted the roses. I just wish they hadn't taken them all, or almost all, you know. Um, no, it definitely wasn't an animal, Alison, because they were neatly clipped with secateurs. But it was also done by someone who doesn't know what they were doing because they weren't clipped properly in order to help the roses sprout more. You know, so it wasn't a kind soul coming around and deadheading. Anyway, I have a painting and um, on the way, so let's get on to the... Let me show you, can you, you can probably see some of what I'm up to at the moment, right? So here is the, this is the colour sketch from a couple of days ago. This is the subject. Now I'm, I'm not sure about the values in this one. I think the values might be too close for this one really to work. Um, but what I love about it is the face of this rose, which is in shadow here. Yeah. I've already started laying it out on the panel. This is a biggish panel for me. How big is this? I was planning to do a small rose painting today, and of course, I, it didn't happen. It's nine inches by 12, and um, I know it's not that big, but it's kind of big for me. And uh, it's, a, it's an ampersand gesso board panel, which I've covered with um, lead white, foundation white with this. So it's kind of... Um, it's a smooth, it's a smoothish kind of a, a slick surface, and I painted an oil couch over it. But it has a lot of imperfections, which I, I really like. I really like the imperfections. Let me show you it a bit closer. We'll switch over cameras. Here's the palette. Um, you can see I've already done a bunch of mixing, although I haven't put any colours on the palette yet. I've just been sorting out the light and the dark shapes and where I think I want 
things to sit. And here's the, the photo of the reference, which is unfortunately desaturated as usual. A couple of things about the colours. These colours here have come from the colour sketch, this colour sketch that I did a couple of days ago of a rose from the same plant. Um, this is the, the, so the light and shadow and some colours in the middle. Th this is light and shadow with the local colour for the pot, except I've dropped the chroma deliberately. Green, because these are going to be the darkest darks, close to, and um, this is kind of the background colour. And I'm going to let the background around this side go slightly towards purple, I think. Oh, the light's just dropped. Let me bring the exposure up. Because the kind of the colour story is the oranges um, against... Um, is that better? Still dark. The oranges against very low chroma purples. That's better. Very low chroma purple blues. So if I bring the, the hue of the background closer to the pot and have them both all very low chroma, we'll see how it works. So at the moment I'm just thinking about, I've just drawn it out and I'm thinking about light and dark shapes. You know, um, drawing out shapes of, of shadow and light to get an idea of where things are going to go early on. It's, I think it's a, it's a beautiful setup. The sun has just gone in. It was very bright earlier on. It's a very warm day, but I'm not, I don't think it's going to might not stay that way. So I've got myself a basic shadow colour, but this colour here is not just, this has been quite carefully mixed, you know. It's, um, it's a very low chroma, like a yellow orange. When I say it's been carefully mixed, it's in terms of the hue. So I'm going to be, the next stage for me now is to start to put some colour in and to organise the light and the dark shapes. To try and deal with the colour and the value at the same time, the light and the shadow. And... Um, And I, I want, I don't necessarily want to replicate the values that I can see there. I want to create a, a, a feeling of the light, you know, if I can, which doesn't always mean painting what's there. The most important colour in the whole thing is this area here, is the shadow of the rose. And I, I'm not, this is where I'm undecided about the value uh, because I don't have a problem with the chroma here because this red-orange reaches high chroma at a very low value. But I might, if I want to have this kind of feeling of it being bathed in light, then I, I might... You know, I've been talking a lot about value balance lately. I might um, do the value slightly higher than it really is. So I want to get the main blocks in so I can start to see how they're going to work as, really as, as soon as I can. I don't want to get, I want things to be in the right place, but I don't want to be thinking about details at all to start with. So the light, light. going to be around here.
light side the light side of the pot thinking about in terms of values like it's it wants to be like a much much lower value than this I haven't really decided where it's going to be because it's actually it's not that far off that value actually thinking about yeah these are about the same value let's go in so um, I've tried to get the um, The chromas and the and the hues right, except that I've I've dropped the chroma slightly on the colours that I've mixed for the bars because I want it to really I want this to really be sing out. So the value of the background in relation to that light. A fair bit darker. But it's nowhere near as dark as this, it's between the two. And I think probably I want it to go to look slightly purple, and I can probably get that just with ivory black and white. Sorry, I'm not I'm not keeping up with the comments at all. This is kind of the this is the um the really interesting part of the painting for me. This is the bit where I do these days where I do most of the work, really. Sorry, let me just catch up. Hello, Miriam. Ginny is here too. Hello. Hello, Ricky. <laughs> Could it have been a four-legged someone that loved your roses? No, I don't think so. Unless it was a four-legged person that also had at least one hand and a pair of secretaries. Well, I, don't, I mean, the roses are really beautiful and, uh, you know, I've invested probably over £200 in, in rose plants. I mean, they're very gorgeous, you know, so. Yeah, I don't know, it's strange. Hello, Anne. Yeah, it's sunny in here too. We seem to have the same weather. You in Norway and us here, we always have the same weather, don't we? Yes, the many-petaled boscobel. I'm ignoring the petals at the moment, and all I'm thinking about is the light. The, um, the value balance and the, the chroma and the hue. Oh, Marjorie, you just got two David Austin, David Austin shrub roses. Do you, what are they? Do you know which ones they are? Do you have deer? Deer ate all your... Hey, you know what? We do have deer. We do have deer. I think it could be deer, but they're such neat clips, though. And I suppose that maybe they've got really sharp teeth, but they look like they've been clipped with secateurs. And they took half the roses on, one, on the big rose bush, which grows in the garden, and they took my wild roses, which I really love, and I was going to paint next, and they've gone. Do you think it could have been a deer? Hello, Martina. Oh, guten Tag. I'm gonna. Um, I'm still thinking about this value here. I imagine that quite a lot of this is going to change as I go. I'm just looking at relationships at the moment, deciding what I think is going to work. I think these values are going to be fairly close. Let's just get some. So this is like my background area. This is my um, shadow.
So this will be slightly blue because it's just ivory black and titanium white. I'm going to put a little bit of the quinacridone rose in to send it slightly more blue purple. Just a touch. I want to be thinking about this relationship between these two mostly because this is the important part here. This rose, it might come down in value. Kids are very lively today. <laughs> I like this effect actually with the showing a little bit of the color underneath. Hopefully if I, if this value is going to work and I don't need to change it much, then, um, then I'll be pretty happy because I can keep this kind of initial very loose painting here. So this relationship wants to be a lot darker. That might work. I think this might need to go a bit lower in value, but that might, it might, this might work. So I can hopefully try and think about some drawing here as well at the same time. This is actually really the dark, that needs to go quite a bit darker than that. It's really is the darkest value. And because it's going on kind of semi-transparent. value isn't going really as low as I want to. Oh, wrong brush. Actually, this will do. Yeah, my yeah, <laughs> yeah. My my roses have gone. <laughs> my roses have gone. All of my beautiful roses that I've been patiently growing, and and we've been wondering like if someone if someone came and took them. But I hadn't actually thought of the deer. I didn't know that deer. And funnily enough, it was like my oldest boy, my ten year old. He said, "Maybe an animal ate them." And I'm like, "No way! Animals don't eat roses." But we do have deer, and I have seen them close to the house. We do have deer close by. So who knows? Maybe it was deer. Bringing the exposure of the camera back down again because the light has it's got very light now. So the value on this side, the shadow side of this um, bars wants to be about the same as this value here. Obviously it's a different, it's a very different color, it's a different hue. Could it be deer? What am I going to do if it's deer? 
how am I going to um, how am I going to, how am I going to dissuade them <laughs> from eating my beautiful rose? Just doesn't look like it though. Just look, it looks very much like they've been clipped. It gets lighter at the bottom here. There's reflected light. Just trying to paint in very general kind of light and shadow at the moment. Get my values sorted out right at the start with very general blocks. Now I think a bit further in about, you know, detail and form. I'm mostly right at the beginning. I'm mostly I'm just I'm 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 just interested in the light. I want the the, the color blocks to be in the right place, so I don't have to redraw everything later. But it's it really is the light. I want. I'm just thinking about the values. And squinting down, you know, like the whole time. You see, what I want to be able to do, what I have in mind, is to be able to work into this area here. I'm not sure if it's going to work out or not, but we'll see, I guess. So there's some, there's a high chroma area around here where the rose is turning towards the light. It starts off very dark still. Again, I want to get these. I want to get these things in before I get to the point of painting any petals. You know, um, it gets darker in there. It's darker in the center. So I'm thinking of a deeper dark. Now this is um, naphthol red with burnt umber. Burnt umber is a red orange, so it will it will keep its kind of orange hue and a higher chroma from the naphthol red down into the shadow. Um, it's gone too orange, though. I'm going to bring a bit of an acrodonin to swing it back a bit further round back towards the red orange towards red too dark don't want to lose chroma Try out choose gold brown. More chroma than um, Bentonba does. So I'm trying to make sure I stay in the same kind of hue, in the same hue area, bringing down the value and bringing up the chroma a little bit. I want this to go down in value around there. Hmm. The deer will eat the eat the buds, the blooms, the foliage, and even the thorny canes. All they took, all that went, was the open flowers, and they were very carefully taken. No buds, no unopened buds went. And 
and um, no, none of the leaves and the the cuts are perfect and they look like they were done this morning maybe last night they were done reasonably recently anyway round at the edge there it drops chrome a little bit I don't want to get too far I'm starting to get sucked into color changes inside the rose which I don't really want to do yet but there is some color I want to bring in that's gorgeous it's a very Right around here it goes lower chrome, it goes to a really beautiful, like a more of a bluish pink. Let's see if I can find the colour I want. The difficulty I'm finding a lot of the time though is to keep Oh, that's too too orange, wow. Let's go really towards purple and see what we get. It's tricky because there's not enough chroma. The right value, that's too orange. This is interesting. I'm being very surprised. This does happen every now and again. Get very surprised by the color of things. That's fascinating. I would not have expected it to have gone that blue-red, but let's try it and see. Yeah, I mean, seriously, they look like they've been very carefully cut with secateurs. <laughs> they really don't look... I mean, if it, if it was a deer, it was the most careful deer in existence. And there's no way it was a small dog because some of the roses that were taken were like my shoulder height. And they seemed to be like, it seemed like very selective. I think that maybe I need some security, yeah. Uh, some security cameras out the front to find out what's happening. There is a fence around the garden. I've never seen them actually in the garden before. We were thinking about putting like some netting over them and put some little bells on it. <laughs> you know? And then we might catch someone that way. I want to try, I really want to try this colour and see. I haven't left myself with a lot of room to mix, unfortunately, which is a bit daft. Let's move all of these over. So I'm probably going to be in this, I think this one is going to be a two day painting at the very least, or possibly more. Um, so I'm not rushing. And this is the bit where I really want to take my time really want to just go like pretty much as slow as I can manage at this point. Deliberately not hurry. I, I, I'm always desperate to get the stuff down and to see if it's going to work. But I need to think really carefully, you know, about, about and look and see how it's working. It's the values I'm mostly interested in. As long as the colours are pretty true, then I want the value balance. The one I just did of, of the um, of the two white roses, the two Irene roses, Irene, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, that was done this way. Spent most of the time at the beginning. These days I spend definitely more time at the beginning of, the, of a painting. So this looks very blue-red, but I have a feeling that when it goes, if I do... This is the naphthor. Yeah. It's not a million miles away, but it's definitely too orange. So quinacridone and white and white. I need to drop this value a bit as well in relation to the lights. 
Actually, that's close. It's a bit too blue, probably. To come down the value range quite a long way. So I wanted, really, I want to do, I suppose you could think about it, the way I, I look at it now is I, I try to organize the color in, in relationship to everything else that's on the panel before I try and paint any form. I'd say that's probably the way I'm, I'm going. Yeah, this is close, but it's very slightly Chrome is too high and it's a little bit too blue, so I, I wonder if I brought it down, the chroma down, with a little bit of burnt umber and white, it will swing it slightly towards orange and um, drop the chroma. That looks good. Very slightly too blue. And that it is within actual within the petals, but I want to put it down as a as a block, as a colour block. Just to see if it works. I think the value may be too high because it, it needs to show this as a highlight. Just put it down as a shape. I think it might be all right. It's interesting how how much towards a blue red it goes on the outside there, and then it comes back round to the orange again as it goes round here. Yeah, we're very secluded here. I mean, that's why I was so surprised. I mean, I can't imagine that anyone would even know that we had them. I want to um, slightly lower our new version of that too. actually looks good. So I'm looking for this area here to, to, to stand out, you know, I don't know if you can see it in the, in the reference photo, but it's, uh, and then that means that it's, the background needs to be slightly darker, not a huge amount, but slightly darker there this value just enough to show these trying very hard not to think about petals I'm trying very hard just to think about color and values Needs to be a little bit darker still. I may have left maybe a little bit too much oil on the panel this time. It's very slick. So all of this would need to be darker too. Um, it's starting to come, I think. I think there is a, the light is starting to come. Uh, 
I think there's, there might be too much chroma. The background's shadow. So I can't hit the value around here. I can't hit the value high enough and still have the chroma that I need. So I'm, it's like this, this is all key, this relationship here. And then I relate everything to that. That's becoming clearer to me now. I wonder what value the background is here compared to this. the rows. It's lighter. It's a lot lighter, so that's interesting. I think this is too dark. Then in that case. This needs to be darker than this value here. It's it's a tricky one. And I can't bring up it's awkward because if I bring up the value of this part here I'll lose the chroma. And if I lose the chroma I just don't think it will work. The light won't work. So I'm trying to think about that relationship there. This bit very much needs to stand out as being the light. My rose is flopping. Oh, that's annoying. It's starting to sag. Um. And this bit needs to be darker than that bit in order to show the light there. And this needs to be darker than that. It's, it's turning out to be a bit... This is what I was worried about this because the values are all quite close. You know, I can't just put in some strong values and have it work because they're, they're, the relationships are really quite, quite close. might not even get through this painting, I might end up just being an, an exercise in values. <laughs> so. And I know on the camera, the thing is on the camera, things are going to look slightly different. The camera will accentuate the lights and darks and um, they look slightly different than what I've got in front of me here. And it's also an image made of light, you know, so I can't. Bit like a backlit, a digital photograph on a backlit screen. So I can't match the, the value range of the photo either. Even less can I ma match the value range of this of the subject. But I want to get I want to get this feeling of it being bathed with light. I don't want it to start to look dark. 
be dark and heavy. But this needs to be quite a bit lighter than this side. But not as light as this, which would mean this would need to come up a bit. Let's get the darkest dark in just to see. And there's some darks in the leaves too. It's hard, I always think it's kind of hard to judge. That's too dark. To judge the values until the darkest dark is in. And in some ways I kind of think it's, it's better to, to have the darks in and then work up from there rather than down from the lights. You tend to run out of room on value scale. This can come down from there though, that it doesn't have to be that light. It's like a kind of a a kind of a pull and push I do at this stage. And it, it isn't necessarily that I'm, I'm trying to paint exactly what's there in terms of the values. I'm just trying to create a, f a, a feeling of light. <laughs> Brenda, you had your first mixing oils on a palette dream. Cool. <laughs> oh, you must be getting serious then. When you, you know you're preoccupied when you start dreaming about it, which you kind of, you know, we need to be really, don't we? Preoccupied with it. Yeah, I've had some funny dreams about mixing values and painting. I had one dream when I was painting with light. Uh, and it was directly because I had an experience when I was first started learning values properly using the Munsell scale. And sometimes it felt like I was actually brushing light onto the canvas and um, strange feeling. And then I... Uh, 
I had a dream that I was actually painting with light. If only. A bit of a, a bit of pull and push going on here when I'm trying to decide getting down to kind of finer um, differences in value now, I suppose. But I'm, I don't, I'm not going to let myself go any further until I'm happy that I've got it all sorted out. I mean, the temptation is because I can see the rows moving. The temptation is to immediately start painting the rows before it goes. But for better or for worse, these days I, I'm spending a lot longer at the beginning on trying to set up the values. See, this is slightly lighter than the green. That is a dark, dark there in the green. And sometimes lately I've been painting with a lot more chroma in the shadows, but I don't really want to with this one because, you know, I want this to be the area of, of highest chroma. I want to um, do something with this value here because it's too high, which means I need to get a color to go in there. So 
So I know I want it to be low chroma, but I want it to differentiate itself a little bit from this. It's just a piece of off grey card that's sitting there, so it, you know, it could be anything. As long as I make the cast shadow and the light make sense, it should, shouldn't matter, I don't think. So the light is just, the value is very slightly lighter than this and about the same as this. I suspect that I've got, that these two values are about the same at the moment. They are, so either this needs to come down or that needs to come up. Uh, which may mean this needs to come down, which is tricky. If it goes much lower than that, I think I will start to lose Chroma. Let's get this value in anyway. It wants to be about the same as this. This is going to have to come down, I think. I'm going to have to live with this not being as sharp a difference as I'd like. So far, so good. I'm still keeping the separate areas for the palette reasonably intact. So we definitely want no chroma there, slightly towards yellow. Now that's the value that I used for here, but it's also the same value as the light part, light side of the, pretty much as the light side of the pot. Actually, if that's the light side of the pot, let's go right up there. There's my light side of the pop brush, here it is. So if I've got that value there, and I've got this value here, see I think that's showing lighter at the moment because I've painted it, it's not opaque. It's too much of the bottom coming through, which is a bit frustrating because I wanted to keep that, but it does need to come down. I don't want an opaque background, I want a brushy and texture. Um, and then, rough brush. Same value now. Should be about the same. lose this edge. And that one. So it's really just bringing down the, the value of the ground. With something that's near neutral but, but different enough from this. This still needs to come down a little bit, I think. But I still need the rows, I still need this difference to show. Actually, I'm losing, 
I don't know if it's the rows moving or I just painted it particularly badly at the start, but it's, it's in a very different position now than what I've got on here. I think I just drew it badly to start with, to be honest with you. See, the values kind of need to be arranged so that there's like this feeling of translucency there where the chroma comes in. I might actually not be up to this. I was, I was wondering when I set this up, I, I, you know, just because something looks good doesn't always mean that it will make a good painting. Do you know what I mean? So I was looking at this as I was setting it up and I was thinking, are the values too close? Is there not enough of a change in value across, you know, for me to really be able to make something that works here? But we'll see. I just really need this to show as like a translucent light. Yeah. I'm not sure if it is enough. Petals would be like around here. I'm going to start trying to put a little bit in and get more of an impression if whether it's going to work. I think it might. This is the bit that matters. I need the light in the shadow. And it's very light around the edge. these petals. I would, you should use flake white for this really, red white, for the texture, but I just want to get the value in and see if it looks like it's going to work. There's a really surprising variation of hue actually in these roses. I know I can't, I can't get the hue at the right value. I can't get the chroma, sorry, at the right value here.
No, I know what you mean. I don't want chemicals either. Definitely not. Good morning, Denise. Yeah, afternoon here. You mentioned you should use flake white. Does it have a better texture? Totally, yeah. Yeah. Um, titanium is more opaque, and it, and it... Let me show you exactly why. I don't usually put it on until the last stages, but just to show you... Um, where is it? So this is Rublev Flemish White. And the reason I, I like it, especially with flower paintings, I'm going to have to put a little bit of oil in with it because it's lost, it's separated in the tube. The reason I like it in flower paintings is, well, you'll see in a second. What you want is what they call ropes. Ropey paint. So this um, this does separate out in the tube, and if you're not careful, you don't look after it properly, like I haven't looked after mine. Um, then what happens is you is you end up with loads of oil coming out earlier on, and then not enough oil with the pigment at the end of the tube. So I just put a bit of cold pressed linseed oil. Can you see how that's starting to change? I don't know how, how well you can see it. It's getting kind of... A sec. I think I can show you this better. kind of gets like stringy, you know, these stringy edge bits. So if you get a bit like that, <coughs> go back to the panel, you can kind of just touch the edge of it to the panel and then pull it around and you get that kind of this texture and it really stands out and it's fantastic for the edges the little light parts on the edges of petals but i don't normally put it in until right at the end you know and also because it's got this because it's uh has it's it's like bumpy and stands out it catches the light more so it's a way of kind of cheating and getting slightly higher value at the same time as getting a nice effect you know so I, I bring it out usually later on, you know. Towards the end, you know that one that I just put up the other day, that, that has loads of that in it. Right at the end it went in. The chroma area comes down around here. Lighter. So these the areas of higher chroma are created by I think by light traveling through a petal and then going into a shadow but i'm not trying to paint i just want to paint the color notes really at the moment and not try and get into doing any petals it's too soon still i'm still thinking about the value balance i think i'm getting there now though i think i'm starting to get a feeling for the light that i wanted um, I think this can possibly come down a little bit without arguing too much, so let's, let's try that. It's starting to get that feeling of being in, kind of infused with light that I want. I um, bathed, bathed in my 
drawing is out there. Okay, this is a bit too big. And I used to find myself a lot in a situation where I would try and fix these things when I was well into a painting, when I already had a lot of this rose done, you know, I'm thinking the rose is going to die, I've got to paint it quick. And dies. Uh, I'm, I'm just not good enough to nail the values on the first go. I have to spend the time on them. To get the value, to get the balance before I can start to uh, do the, the fun parts. But I need like a little bit of everything in so I can, can see how they're going to work against each other. This can definitely come down in value. So let's So I'm constantly, while I'm looking at this, I'm constantly, I've got one eye closed and I'm squinting down with the other eye, you know, I, I, to try and make myself not, not look at details and just to look at the, uh, the balance. Bring it up, I bring it down and I'm, I bring it up and I think I brought it up too far, I take it back down, I think I've taken it down too much. It's I need this darker here to show this light, not that dark though. No. to show this light. I need that there. I think it's starting to come. This this is the bit that I keep coming back to and looking at to see if I think it's if it's going to work. I know it looks still really rough at the moment, and it's not. This is not kind of the interesting bit of a painting to to watch, but it's the bit that matters. <laughs> you know, I really think it's the bit that matters the most. And although it might not be so interesting. Uh, I do think it's, you know, it, it's worth me showing you like uh, this, this bit. I think sometimes it's 
see people paint, you could get the impression that it all happens very quickly and easily. And I've got to tell you, it never does for me. <coughs> this, the vases, the drawing on the vases is horrendous, isn't it? I know you didn't want to say anything. It's all right, though. I won't be hurt. Let's face it, it's awful. I do actually want things to be in the right place, you know, to an extent as well. And it helps. So these values want to be pretty much matched. But I'm going up the value range quite quickly, so there's going to be a bit more light in the shadow than otherwise might appear. I'm not sure if that is quite... That might be too light. Actually, that's going to go slightly towards... And this is, is lighter, so it can go down. Let's try it. That wasn't very clear, was it? This, the value I've got here is, is lighter than the actual value of the rows. Um, I want to keep chroma, but I can go down the value scale there. This bit, to be honest, I find it particularly difficult at this stage to talk about what I'm doing at the same time. When I'm trying to think it through, um, it does get a little bit, it comes out as garbled sometimes and I, I'm thinking, what did I just say? It didn't make any sense at all. This is the quinacridone gold brown with naphthol red. I want to keep the chroma up, but I want to bring the, the value down. Hopefully without overdoing it. The high chroma area. And um, bring a bit more light into this colours of the rose. I'm happy with it being a bit lighter. I, d I don't mind about that because. You know, I've gone up the value range quite quickly, so this is lighter than it actually looks, you know. Let's try and sort out the base of that pot a bit better. Yeah, I like this lighter with the higher chroma. I know it's not entirely accurate, 
but it's the it's a, a you know I like the feeling of it. As I work into it, I'll probably lose a little bit of chrome around the edge. It stays quite low value, but it definitely does lose a bit of chrome around the edge, and it goes out towards the blue, very subtle, or towards the blue, red, and drops chroma. It's actually just a lower chroma version of this, so I'm going to bring in this is a burnt umber and titanium white is a ends up being a very very low chroma red orange, which is all brown is you know it's just a, it's orange basically it can be more yellow or more more red but it's uh, more towards red but it's brown is basically a low value low chroma orange It would make sense in a way for me to have had all of this like pre-mixed but yeah I think I'm going to bring the value up a little bit I think it wants to be slightly higher value these are I suppose uh, yeah I'm, I'm getting into uh, smaller changes now I'm fairly happy with how it's looking overall It is, it is, it's, the shadow is a lot more chromatic. It looks slightly more chromatic on the screen, actually. It looks a lot more chromatic on the screen. Um, Sean said, I've noticed there's a lot of pass-through light with flowers. Do you treat that light the same as reflected light? No, no, because reflected light is... It, I try to think of it as as coloured light. It's light that has a hue. That that pass through light. Yeah, we've we've been talking about that quite a bit on these streams actually, and calling it transmitted light. And um, it definitely has a hue to it, and I think it in, it intensifies the chroma. Whereas with reflected light, the chroma is not that intense. You can really punch it up, like people who paint the kind of um, the David Leffel school. And it works, you know, as long as the value is good. You can punch up the chroma a lot in, in reflected light. But it's not usually as high chroma as people paint it a lot of the time. You know, it's not saying that you, you shouldn't paint it higher chroma if that's the aesthetic you want. But it's good to know that you're doing it, you know. Let me try and sort out. The sun is coming into the studio and it must have been going for a while. Oh yeah, an hour and 20 minutes. Let me try and sort out the exposure on the camera a little bit. And I think it's looking a tad more saturated 
on the stream than it really looks in real life. Quite a lot more saturated, actually. High chroma, too high chroma. Yeah, the details, they kind of, um, they tend to happen fairly quickly, you know, when you get to that point. If all of this is right, then when you come to doing the details, they tend to come a lot more easily and a lot more quickly. All right, do you want something? Yeah, the this music stand. Oh, uh, isn't it out there? What, the black, black one? one? No, it's out there. It's on the other side, next to the window. Camera is overexposed. Is it? I think it is. So hard to judge. I think that's that's looking probably closer to what I've got going on here. Yeah, so it's been one of the things I've thought about, I think about, you know, a lot and in relation to, to painting is is to try not to get too into the details too soon. Um, because if everything is set up quite well, with the, with the values and the balance, I tend to find that um, I don't need to paint as much in order to create a feeling of light and form. You can paint with a bit more brevity, but just lately I'm starting to think that I want to bring in a bit more care into how I model the, the smaller forms. Um, but again, there's no, there's no point in me starting to do that until I'm really happy with the balance. But until I'm really happy that the values are working well. Probably brought that down a bit too far. But actually, I think this, this one might work out. I wasn't at all convinced that it was going to at the beginning. But a lot depends on, on what happens with the flower now. A lot depends on that, if the flower makes it, basically, or not. I, I don't think this flower is going to make it till tomorrow at the stage it's at at the moment. I've caught it right, right at the end of its, of its life, I think. And... Um, which means if I'm going to work on this tomorrow, I'm probably going to have to um, work from the photo. And it's moved quite a bit from the photo, so I'm not, we'll see. I mean, you never know, it might, still might not actually work out. But I am, um, I am fairly happy with the, the value balance at least. You know, it's, it's getting that kind of feeling of light that I wanted it to have. And it happens quite frequently to me that I can't finish a painting just because, you know, the flower doesn't make it or And I'm not, and it's changed too much. What I've got on the panel has changed too much from the photo I took to be able to still work from the photo. But we'll see what happens. There's a lot of sunlight coming into the studio now. It's very much affecting what I'm seeing. Which is annoying because I've just got to the point where I'm starting to feel that it's coming. I've got all the colours that I need on the palette now, I think. <laughs> and, uh, and the light is about to go. The light is about to stop me.
Oh, it's going on nice now as well. That's such a shame. It is starting to go on nicely. I think. Come up a little bit in the value just around the road. Well, we'll see how we go. I've got enough on, probably, to be able to kind of extrapolate from the from the photo and, and finish it. Uh, this, the flower is definitely not going to be in any, anything like the same kind of place tomorrow as it is now. It's moving almost as I'm speaking. I can see it moving, so... That's going to be um, tricky. It's going to have to be going back to the photo to finish it, I think, if I do manage to get it done. Um, but I'm going to stop now. It's in a, it's actually, um, it's in, both those roses are in one of these, inside the jar. It's the only way I could get them to stand up, otherwise the, the, um, this one was just was flopping too far over. It's funny. The things you get into doing. Uh, I, I like the fact that I've paint, I'm bringing this painting this vase with a lot lower chroma than it really is. When I look just at the vase, it makes me want to add chroma and to add uh, light. You know, it is a little bit. There's a, I need to add a bit more higher value around here, but um, but you know, I don't have to be as long as it works in the painting. I don't have to be entirely true to the vase that's there, and I like the fact that everything is lo this low chrome. It's really kind of setting that off quite nicely. I think there's the highlight. You know, I would want to be I kind of as as my lightest light. I can think about that now. I've kind of been taking this as my lightest light, but obviously there's highlights on the vase. Won't maybe work quite as well as they normally would because I've gone right up the value range on the rows. Just putting them in just to see, you know, how they would work, give me an impression. So this is like pure titanium white is the highest value I can get in paint. I just want to see if they would be likely to work or not. Because I've come up so high on the value here now that it's they're not going to stand out. I'm too high here. A little bit of undisciplined painting at the end and it's it's not good went too high that should work all right i think <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't know if I'm going to get this one done. We'll see. I'm, I'm happy with it at the moment. I think it's got quite a nice kind of a mood to it. Uh, we're going to have to see what happens. It's m mostly now I would want to spend some time working into the rows, but the sun is coming into the studio, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do it anymore today. Um, we'll see. You know, maybe maybe this one stays as a as a study, and and maybe it makes it to be a painting. I'm going to smooth this off a lot of what I've got here so that it's not um, it's easier to work on later. 
tempting as it is to try and start sculpting some petals in there. I'm not really ready for that stage yet, don't think. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. Um, and I'll see you again next week, if not before, uh, on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Paint, if you can. Look at flowers. Find calm, if you can. And um, I'll see you all again soon.